Hey there, science fans. Welcome back to another exciting episode where we explore the wonders of the world around us. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of math, specifically something called functions. Functions are a fundamental concept in mathematics that help us understand relationships between different quantities. Now, functions might sound complicated at first, but they're really just like magic boxes. Imagine a box that can transform anything you put inside it into something new and exciting. You put something in, the box does its thing, and then poof, you get something new out the other side. It's like a magician performing a trick, but instead of magic, it's math doing the work. Let's say our magic box has a special rule. It doubles any number you put in. This means if you put in a number, the box will multiply it by two and give you the result. For example, if you put in a two, you get a four. It's like having a superpower that makes everything twice as big. And if you put in a 10, out pops a 20, see? Functions are not only useful, but also a lot of fun to play with. They help us solve problems and understand how different things are connected. Functions can be used in many different ways. They can help us calculate distances, predict outcomes, and even create beautiful patterns. The possibilities are endless. So next time you see a math problem, think of it as a magic box waiting to be opened. With a little bit of curiosity and some practice, you'll be able to unlock the secrets inside. Remember, math is not just about numbers and equations, it's about discovering new ways to think and solve problems. And who knows, you might just find that math is a lot more magical than you ever imagined. Thanks for joining us today, science fans. Keep exploring, keep learning, and always stay curious. Until next time, keep the magic of math alive. Now before we get too far, let's talk about what we put our magic function box. These are called inputs. Inputs are like the ingredients in our mathematical recipe. They're the numbers we want our function to work on. We can use any number we want for our input. We could use whole numbers like one, two, three, or we could get fancy and use fractions like one half or decimals like 0 0.75. It's up to us. Okay, so we've got our magic box and we know what we're putting into it, but where do the results go? That's where the codomain comes in. Think of the codomain as a big target range for all the possible outputs of our function. It's like saying, hey, our function make any number on this target. It doesn't mean it hit every single number, just that those numbers are all possibilities. Let's imagine our function is a ticket booth at a carnival. You put in a dollar and you win a prize. The codomain is like a sign listing the prizes you win, a giant teddy bear, a goldfish, or a bouncy ball. You putting in a dollar doesn't guarantee you'll win the teddy bear. It just means it's one of the outcomes listed in the codomain. Section five, range where things end up. Now let's talk about the range. While the codomain is about what's, the range is all about what happens. It's the set of all the outputs our function produces. So if our ticket booth function mostly gives out bouncy balls and only a goldfish, then the range is just those two prizes. The teddy bear, even though it's to win, isn't actually part of the range because nobody's winning it. Section six, range in action, back to the ticket booth. Let's dive deeper into understanding the concept of range in a function by revisiting our ticket booth example. Imagine you walk up to the ticket booth with a dollar in hand. You insert the dollar into the machine and every single time, without fail, you receive a bouncy ball. This is a consistent and predictable outcome. In this scenario, the range of our ticket booth function is simply the bouncy ball. It's the only prize you can get no matter how many times you try. The range is the set of all possible outputs of a function. Here, the bouncy ball is the only output, making it the entire range of our function. Now let's consider the codomain. The codomain includes all the possible prizes that the ticket booth could theoretically offer. This might include a goldfish, a teddy bear, or other fairground prizes. These items are part of the codomain because they are potential prizes that the booth could dispense. However, since the machine only ever gives out bouncy balls, the goldfish and the teddy bear are not part of the range. They are never actually won so they remain unclaimed and outside the range of our function. 
Understanding the difference between the range and the codomain is crucial. The range is what you actually get, while the codomain is what you could potentially get. In our ticket booth example, the range is limited to the bouncy ball, even though the codomain includes other prizes. So every time you put in a dollar, you know exactly what to expect. The range is predictable and consistent, which makes it easy to understand and anticipate the outcome. This concept can be applied to many real-life situations where functions and their ranges are involved. By understanding the range, you can better predict and understand the outcomes of different actions and decisions. So next time you're at a fair or amusement park, think about the range of the games and machines you encounter. It might just give you a new perspective on how things work. And remember, while the codomain might be vast and varied, the range is what you actually walk away with. In our case, it's that trusty bouncy ball every single time. Section seven, codomain versus range, the key difference. So to sum it all up, codomain, all the possible outputs of a function, like a list of all the prizes you could win. Range, the outputs that actually happen. The prizes people are really winning. The range is always a part of the codomain, but the codomain might have things in it that aren't in the range. Section eight, why it matters, codomain and range in the real world. But Bill, you might be asking, why do we even care about codomain and range? These terms might seem abstract and purely theoretical, but they have practical applications that impact our daily lives in ways we might not even realize. Well, understanding these concepts helps us understand how functions work and what they can do. When we talk about the codomain, we're referring to the set of all possible outputs a function can produce. The range, on the other hand, is the actual set of outputs we get when we apply the function to its inputs. This distinction is crucial in many fields. It's like knowing the rules of a game. It makes things more fun and predictable. Imagine playing a board game without knowing the rules. It would be chaotic and confusing. Similarly, understanding the codomain and range of a function allows us to predict and control outcomes more effectively. For example, engineers use functions to design bridges. They need to know the range of forces and stresses that the bridge will experience to ensure it can withstand them. By understanding the codomain and range, they can create safer and more efficient structures. Computer programmers use them to create video games. When designing a game, Developers need to understand the range of possible actions a player can take and the corresponding outcomes. This helps in creating a balanced and engaging gaming experience. And scientists use them to study everything from the weather to outer space. Meteorologists use functions to predict weather patterns by analyzing data and understanding the range of possible weather conditions. Astronomers use them to calculate the trajectories of celestial bodies and understand the vast universe. Financial analysts also rely on these concepts to predict market trends and make investment decisions. By understanding the range of possible outcomes, they can make more informed choices and minimize risks. In the medical field, researchers use functions to analyze patient data and predict health outcomes. This helps in developing treatments and understanding the effectiveness of different therapies. Even in the arts, understanding functions can be beneficial. Digital artists use mathematical functions to create complex designs, and musicians use them to compose and analyze music. So, as you can see, the concepts of codomain and range are not just confined to the classroom. They are tools that help us navigate and understand the world around us making our lives more structured and predictable. Whether you're an engineer, a scientist, a programmer, or even an artist, understanding these mathematical concepts can enhance your work and open up new possibilities. So next time you encounter these terms, remember their real-world significance and how they contribute to various fields. Embrace the power of mathematics and see how it shapes the world we live in. The codomain and range are just the beginning of a fascinating journey into the realm of functions and their applications. Section 9. Wrapping it up. Remember the magic. So there you have it, codomain and range. 
Just remember our magic function box, the possible outputs, codomain, and the actual outputs, range, and you'll be a math whiz in no time. Section 10, keep exploring. Math is everywhere. Keep your eyes peeled, science explorers. Math is all around us just waiting to be discovered. Until next time, keep asking questions and never stop learning.